Hello everybody, this video is the introduction to forces. So what is a force? A force, simply speaking, is a push or pull that acts on an object which results from its interaction with another object or field. Forces that results from interactions between objects is known as a contact force. For example, when a person is pushing a box along a flat surface. Forces that are caused by interaction between objects and fields are known as forces mediated by fields or simply non-contact forces. A good and common example of this is weight force, as it is caused by the interaction between an object and the gravitational field of Earth. All forces are vector quantities, which means they have a magnitude as well as a direction. The unit of force is Newton. There are a variety of different contact forces. This includes a simple push or pulling force, the normal force, frictional forces, air resistance, tension force, and spring force. These examples are not exhaustive, and I'll go through each one of them in more detail either in this video or in the separate videos. Let's talk briefly about force mediated by fields. Most commonly, we have the gravitational force, which is more simply known as a weight force. This force is caused by an object and the gravitational field that's produced by another object. There is the electromagnetic force, which is further divided into a force due to the magnetic field and force due to the electric field. We'll discuss the concept of electromagnetic forces in their own videos later in the course in Module 4. And there's also the strong force and weak force, which we'll discuss in the HEC course at the end of Module 8. The weight force is the force acting on an object due to another object's gravitational field. The weight force is known as a non-contact force as it does not involve the contact between two or more objects. The weight force acting on an object is simply given by the mass of the object multiplied by gravity. Gravity here is also known as the gravitational acceleration. In this instance, when we are using the gravitational acceleration of 9.8, we are assuming that the force is due to the Earth's gravitational field. It is important to notice that there's a difference in definition in physics between weight and an object's mass. The object's mass refers to the amount of particles and matter that's intrinsically in the object, and this should not change with the forces acting on the object. So if an object weighs, let's say, 10 kilograms, then it will stay as 10 kilograms no matter what forces are acting on it. However, in contrast, the weight of an object is the force that acts on that 10 kilogram mass due to the gravitational field of another object. In most instances, when we are talking about Earth, the weight force is the force due to the gravitational field of Earth. So just to clarify, mass is the amount of matter that's intrinsically in an object whereas weight is the force acting on that mass due to the gravitational field of another object. In the weight force equation, it is important to notice that the weight force is directly proportional to an object's mass. Heavier objects are acted upon by stronger weight forces when they are inside the same gravitational field. If we compare the weight forces between two objects, let's say 5 kilograms versus 10 kilograms, the 5 kilogram mass will have a smaller weight force, exactly half as much compared to that acting on 10 kilogram mass. The first type of contact force we'll discuss is known as a normal force. The normal force is a force exerted by a surface on an object that is in contact with it. This is the reason why it's a contact force because it requires an object to be directly in contact with the surface. The normal force as a vector, it always is directed away from the surface, in this case this is a table, and it is perpendicular to the surface, hence why this is known as a normal force. The definition of normal is a perpendicular line drawn from the surface. So in this example, the box is in contact with the table, is acted upon by a 100 newton normal force directed upwards perpendicular to the surface of the table. The frictional force is a force that resists the motion of an object 
when it's moving over a solid surface. Frictional force, commonly represented by a smaller case F, is related to the normal force as we previously looked at. Specifically, it equals to mu, which is the friction coefficient of the surface, multiplied by the normal force that the surface exerts on the object. The friction coefficient depends on the nature of the surface. Surfaces with smaller amount of friction will have a smaller friction coefficient mu, and vice versa. Surfaces with larger friction will have a larger mu value. It is also important to know that the frictional force is a type of contact force as it requires the object to be in contact with the surface. This is also another reason why the friction force depends on the normal force, as when the object is in contact with the surface, it is also acted upon by the normal force that's perpendicular to the surface. Going further, there are two types of frictional forces, static friction and kinetic friction. Static friction is a type of frictional force that acts on the object when it is relatively stationary, that is, at rest with the surface. In contrast, kinetic friction is a type of frictional force that acts on the object when it is moving relative to the surface. In general, when the type of surface remains the same, the kinetic friction coefficient, which we often represent as mu with a lowercase k, is less than the static friction coefficient, which we abbreviate as mu with a lowercase s. So before we perform calculations using the friction coefficient, it is important to identify whether there's static friction, that is the object is at rest and not moving, or there's kinetic friction, that is the object is moving relative to the surface. When an object is stationary on a surface, static frictional force is only present when there's an applied force. That is, there's some sort of pushing or pulling force acting on the object trying to promote movement or motion. As you can see in the graph, static friction is equal to the amount of applied force. As the amount of applied force increases, so does the static friction. When the applied force reaches a certain point, it will eventually cause the object that is on the surface to start moving. When the object starts to move relative to the surface, we no longer have static friction. We'll then look at kinetic friction. Kinetic friction is different to static friction in the sense that it is usually constant for a given object and a given surface, no matter the amount of applied force. So you can see here, as the amount of applied force further increases, the kinetic friction stays the same or stays constant. This is one difference between static friction and kinetic friction. Another key difference you should notice is that when motion occurs, the magnitude of kinetic friction is generally lower than the maximum amount of static friction that was present before the object started to move. This usually is the case for any type of surfaces. The tension force is a force that is present in a string or rope when they are stretched under an applied force. The direction of tension force is along the length of that string or rope, that is, it is parallel to the length of the string or rope, and it is always opposite to the applied force. For example, if you have two people pulling on the rope in opposite directions, the applied force is towards themselves because they're pulling away from each other. That means the tension force acts along and is parallel to the length of this rope, but it is in the opposite direction to the applied force. The applied force produced by the person on the left is towards the left, which means the tension that acts on this person is towards the right. Likewise, the applied force produced by the person on the right is towards the right, and as a result, the tension that's in the rope which acts on the person is towards the left. In all circumstances, tension force is only present when the rope is fully stretched out, in other words, it is taut.